I'm <laughs> Professor Petke. I'm co-director of the Berlin program. Uh, I, I won't say so much because I want the students to, to have a little more time uh, to, to give their perspective, but uh, a couple of basics. One, it's about negotiation and mediation, also international arbitration. Uh, the focus is negotiation and mediation, which I think these days are key skills, whether you're a lawyer or whether you're just negotiating with your six-year-old when to go to bed, as I did yesterday for about one and a half hours. You see, I'm not a good negotiator or mediator for that point when it comes to my own family, but uh, you, you try. It's, it's a skill-based program which distinguishes it from all the other programs that we have. It's all about the skills from day one. Uh, to the last day when you have the exam. So topics are negotiation, mediation, international arbitration, and we will add, we're working on that as, as an addition, not as part of the core program, part of the core program, but as an addition, mediating political conflict, because the skills that you deploy as a negotiator, as a mediator, as an arbitrator perhaps, uh, are the same that you also deploy in international conflict situations. So that will be a special uh, addition to the program in uh, 2014. Uh, these skills, as I said, are important for lawyers, as they are for non-lawyers. Uh, and I think the increasing relevance uh, of ADR in legal practice uh, speaks to the importance of the program. It's very interactive. Uh, you will have lectures at the outset, sometimes in the afternoon, but predominantly in the morning. First session will be, will be a lecture. Uh, interactive on, on these topics, followed by a breakup session. You'll be in small groups of maybe 15, maybe 16, 17, up to 20 students with two instructors, and you'll actually be mediating, you'll actually be negotiating hypotheticals taken from real life. So you'll be thrown into the deep end on day one, and the hypotheticals will get increasingly complex as the course goes along <coughs> until the very, very end. There are certificates uh, for all four parts. Three we had uh, last year and mediating political conflict will, will be added, as I said, this year. So you have, you have certificates that, that show your participation and your activity in all of these four parts. The most important one certainly is for mediation because all states have laws that regulate how and whether you can work as a mediator and the standard requirement is a 40-hour course in mediation. Berlin uh, meets that requirement, so you can use that as part of your package once you apply to be a certified mediator. We are at Humboldt University, and again, that is perhaps a difference to the other summer programs that we have here at Tulane Law School. It is a real partner. So it's not just the location of the law school, of the summer school, it's also a real partner in the sense that part of the faculty is drawn from Humboldt, and more importantly, we have just about 120 students, all in all, 50% are recruited through Humboldt University, the rest of the globe, and our share is US and Canada. So it's a really very international uh, summer school. Last summer, I think we had 25 different nationalities assembled in those 120 students. So you get to meet folks from all over the world, all over Europe, <coughs> South America, uh, Australia, there's always a big batch, and parts of uh, Asia. So it's, it's really very exciting, very interactive, and. Uh, quite quite uh, exciting on, on that count. Humboldt is located right at the center of Berlin, wanted in Lipton. That's as central as you can be. Most students live very close to the law school, so that they, uh, but maybe the students can speak to that, they can, uh, they can really experience the city. And there's always, always, always something going on. We have one member of the faculty, he teaches, he's an instructor, but he also organizes the extracurricular activities. So there's always, every evening, some program where you can join, it's all, you know, uh, free. But you can join in if you want to. There's always a group going to a museum, taking a bicycle ride, going to the theater, going to clubs and bars, playing soccer, playing volleyball. There's always something to do each evening. So it can become quite an exhausting experience. You're there at 9.30 with your first session, then you go through all the, the group work until the afternoon. You might choose to do international arbitration, which you don't have to, it's an add-on uh, in the first week. You might do that as well, and then you go off with your peers and enjoy Berlin. And I will say, I come from Hamburg, I'm German myself, I come from Hamburg, and it's very, very difficult to say. But Berlin is an exciting city. It's probably more exciting than Hamburg. 
come on, do it, you can do it. Uh, <laughs> Hamburg, of course, is great, but Berlin is, is really. Berlin these days, and, and that's nearly all I have to say, uh, Berlin these days is kind of what Berlin was between World War I and World War II. It's very avant-garde, new stuff, new architecture, new music, new culture, new theatre, new literature uh, is developing in Berlin. It's a hub of, of avant-garde culture uh, and that's quite exciting to experience. Last point, we may have an, a big European alumni meeting in Berlin this summer. We're still working on that. It would be a good opportunity for all those coming to the Berlin program to uh, contact and, and get in touch with alumni. If you're interested in working internationally, certainly a good opportunity. You can always reach out to alumni, of course, but seeing them on a boat ride, <coughs> uh, being able to very informally interact with them uh, is a good opportunity if you're seeking job opportunities, internship opportunities. Last point, internships. If you are interested, I can try. I always try. Uh, language, of course, is a problem, simply because most, even large law firms in Germany will work predominantly in German. But we have alumni, I've asked them in the past years whether they would be willing to take in uh, students for a limited period of time. They are, bless you, they are, um, even if there is no, no German there, because these, these alumni do work in large law firms where English is spoken, of course. English, by the way, in Berlin and across Germany, not an issue at all. Everyone will speak to you in, in, in English. German is not required to get around. All right. Students, who's uh, speaking? Khaled, I think. And yeah. <coughs> I didn't actually go. This summer, I went in the summer of 2012, so not 2013. Um, there are, there's a, it's like a cultural guy, he is one of the professors, and he'll take you out after uh, class, after you have a break to go home, of course. And every day, there's something to do. Every day, he'll take you to a new neighborhood. Every day, he'll take you to somewhere uh, amazing and fun and exciting. And classes don't start until 10, I think. So, well, we had a 9.30 class, I think, last, uh, which wasn't all that popular, but it worked out. All right. Well, I was there to start class started at 10, which is, I think, the reason I actually picked um, Berlin, besides being in Berlin, and, and, and my, interest so in, my interest in culture, in uh, media <laughs> association, and uh, the, the one thing about um, Berlin is that it's all, like, there's lectures at the, in the morning, but then it's all hands-on, like, you, uh, you, like, sit across the table from someone, they're like, all right, here's what you, who you are, who you're representing, now negotiate with this person, and that was, like, it really made, you know, it really made you think and like practice those skills, and it is extremely international. Uh, like Professor Fick has said, half the students are from um, not Americans, so <coughs> have that uh, intercultural mingling again. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, I mean that just goes to you building rapport, um, and you know you get that experience here with your classmates, um, but you know you it's a lot different doing it there um, along the, along the intercultural lines. Um, and in my experience, because I went this past summer, and uh, I made a lot of friends um, from Australia, um, Melbourne um, was the university that um, had a lot of students come over. Um, and one of the reasons that I picked the Berlin program was that um, it was one of the shorter programs. It was only two weeks. And I was able to still um, do externships. Um, and come back home and do externships. So that was really attractive for me. So if you all are still keeping in mind that you know you may have work that you want to come home and do, but still want to have the summer abroad experience, Berlin is um, may be the program for you. And like Khaled said, there's every day there is something planned for you to do, and it's not you know a boring experience. Berlin has some beautiful architecture, beautiful museums, um, beautiful people, and they're very friendly. Um, so, I mean, really do consider it. Professor Becker's store is always open um, for you to go and talk to him about Berlin. Um, so, I really just want you guys to keep that in mind. Berlin has also the best nightlife in all of Europe. It does. Um, they, uh, they also, I mean, not that I went to every single one, but they have nightclubs literally everywhere on top of a 20 story building mm -hmm. and a barge that is now a swimming pool uh, under a train station, an abandoned castle. Uh, Old warehouse. And, and like, what was it like? It's <coughs> over 24 hours. And yeah. Like, so you, know. you see this. I mean, you can't. I you can't see the sunrise from all of these places, um, especially the well, top of the 20-story building. Yeah. 
Uh, anyway, so go go to Berlin. <laughs>